Our next guest is here, oh, Dr. Patty. Patty Ashley. She is an incredible, incredible woman who is leading and specializing in individual and couple and family counseling and therapy. Um, she has created a unique process called the Authenticity Architecture. Um, so all of this has, has brought her into what we need immediately <laughs> to really create a world that is better for our individual perception and our collective reality. So Patty, thank you for being with us. And I am so excited to hear your knowledge and your golden nuggets that that will heal and guide us to the mm. next stage. Thank so happy you. to see you, Patty. Thank you so much for your coming, Patty. So happy to see you too, Michelle. I loved your birthday uh, meditation. I was just taken in the love. And um, yeah, so thank you so much for having me. What an honor. I mean, when I first heard about the Never Alone move, movie and movement, it took me a minute, but I was stunned because I remembered a meditation I did when I was working on some unresolved grief from having lost my father at the age of 11. And I was in a workshop with John Bradshaw and I was about 30 something. And I met my father in the meditation and his message was, you are never, ever alone. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. So it was a beautiful four seconds. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> so I was stunned because as a psychotherapist, you can imagine what work is, is like for me now. I want to rewind, though, back to what it was like before, um, you know, and when I heard about the movement and I was so excited because I was dealing with families and a lot of kiddos, like high school and college kids, who have this existential depression, They, the question is, what's the point? Why are we here? And then the hurry and the rush and the pressure and the perfectionism, everybody was exhausted. And then I was also having kiddos come and talk about having to go to school and participate in shooter drills. So they're learning how, where to go if there's a school show shooting and you know, I, <laughs> my kids are so smart and they're saying, you know, but that's ridiculous because the shooter was, was one of the students and they know the drill. So what, you know, there, there was these bigger questions that were happening and a, a sense of exhaustion. And of course I love, it was so wonderful to hear all the amazing people tonight and Marianne Williamson and, and everybody, but you know, Marianne, I, I followed her forever. And, um, everything she said just really I, hits me right here as many of the other um, speakers tonight. But so then COVID happens <laughs> and our lives get turned upside down. And here we are now in this really surreal experience. And um, so I've been fortunate to be able to continue my work online with my clients. And what I'm experiencing is, is experiencing with them is almost like a PTSD response. And so what we learn from post-traumatic stress disorder is that trauma in the body memory has no time. And so when we you know, have something that, that happens that triggers a memory, then we feel like we're in the trauma. And so we're also in a collective grief. And I, uh, Joan Borensenko is a dear, dear heart. And um, you know, when she's talking about grief, and moving through grief, of course, that's been a big piece of my work, right? Losing my dad at 11. And also, as, as Chopra was saying, very similar, my existential search, because I was Catholic and was told my dad was in heaven, and I should be happy. And I was 11 years old, went back to sixth grade and didn't talk about it with anyone. Mm -hmm. And so in high school, I knew that this is the work I wanted to do. I always say I always wanted to give people a place to talk about things that are hard to talk about because I kept thinking something really hard has happened and nobody wants to talk to me about it. So I'm really blessed to be able to do this work and witness people right now going through grief, going through PTSD. And my work has emerged, evolved into really looking at, at core shame, which is similar to trauma in the neurobiology. And mm -hmm. so I just finished my third book, which hopefully will be out soon for therapists on working with shame and psychotherapy. 
And it, you know, when we talk about this not enoughness, this pandemic of not enoughness, um, which several of our speakers have said tonight, and you know, we look at the neurobiology of that. I go back to my de child development uh, research and my work. I was a special education teacher and a parent educator, and I have a background in child development. And what I know about the old parenting belief systems of spare the rod, spoil the child, do as I say, you know, don't be angry, don't be this, don't be that. We didn't learn until the mid 20th century that we weren't that wasn't really the best thing to raise a really healthy human being. So we're relearning that in my work with moms, my doctoral research was on women not feeling good enough as mothers, really uncovered this neurobiology of not enoughness. And so the brain research now is showing that we can't do it from the neck up because the moms would read all these books. They know we're supposed to do it different, but they kept saying behind closed doors, I can't get it right, I can't get it right. Um, what's wrong with me? Nobody else has this problem. So now we're in this response. So the PTSD looks, it triggers these not enoughness, which we also in, you know, the, our field now are calling a core shame experience and we need to heal that. So how do we heal that? We can't do it by thinking about I am enough. You know, I don't think there's been one person walking in my office that could ever say I am enough. And then the problem is it takes years and years and years of repetition to get the body memory to change, to change it on a cellular level. So what I've been doing now, um, one of the tools I've been using with my clients is I came up with what I'm calling the PPEs. You know, we're talking about our personal protective yeah. equipment. So I came up with your personal protective emotional equipment. And so to help my clients remember that. So the first one is practice presence. So all the meditation that we've done tonight and Michelle and Gabriella, the meditation that you bring. And I can't wait for your app to come out for the, I'm just so excited about your app, meditation app for kids. Um, so mindfulness, even if it's just a minute of just kind of getting present in your body. Um, and I talk about the fantastic five to my clients to help them remember that you know, what happens because the body memory has no time. If we are in this PTSD response or grief response, we got to come back to present moment and find five things that are comfortable and safe. Maybe it's your cat, your uh, soup, the flowers in the yard, a warm blanket, um, you, you know, your plants, whatever, find five things and you have to, because we want to get a sensory memory of safety into the neurobiology. Second one is play. Because we found that play, when we're in, when we're playing, we can't be in fear, and so playing curiosity you see in little kids, it's so natural, and yet as adults we kind of lose it. We we kind of think we're too busy. We're all just too busy, right? But now in this pandemic, when we're still busy and busy in a different way with homeschooling and working at home and all the the challenges that are going on for the people who are unfortunately first responders and you know firsthand, um, you know, in it, um, we don't want to play because we think we're too busy. But if you if you can take a moment to play and laugh, it actually calms the nervous system and tells the body it's safe. And we want to get that present moment body safety. So anything people like to do different things. Some people like creative arts, music, dance, um, anything that we can do that's playful and fun. This is a little thing that I use all the time. It's called my little Nuff. Oh, that's a, friend, cute. My friend, a friend of a friend drew this for me because again, see the playfulness. When you look at it, you go, ah. Yeah, I love. <laughs> when I work with them now on the computer, they say, there's my Nuff. You know, they keep oh, it. I love that. That's very cute. We will, in a, in, a, in a few minutes also with Gabriella, we will develop our new approach of meditation, the approach that we developed for the prisoners of Los Angeles. And uh, thank you so much, Patty, for all you do since many years. It is so, so important. Thank you, Patty, to be with us. We love you, Patty. I love that. We love your, your uh, adorable book. It's so cute. <laughs> thank you for thank all you, you do. Thank you. It was an honor to be here. Thank you. It's so an honor much. to host you, Patty.